What is the mind? The mind is a set of programs that have the tendency to repeat themselves, providing perception that provides thoughts and thought forms that ultimately provide how we experience the world. We're dedicated uh, to the real self emerging. We're dedicated uh, to embracing the next great vision version of ourself. But to do that, we must take back our mind, you see. Peace and riches, blessings. I am Michael B. Beck with the host of Take Back Your Mind. Peace and riches, blessings, and welcome to Take Back Your Mind. I am Michael B. Beckwith, the founder of the Agape International Spiritual Center. You might know me from the movie The Secret, of which I was a featured teacher. You might know me from the life visioning process. But today, I'm inviting you into the podcast, Take Back Your Mind. And today, I'm going to be breaking down what that means, what it means for your mind to be hijacked, and the ramifications of that what it means to actually take it back and to stand in dominion so that you can begin to live the life that you are ordained to live. And you know what? Every week we're going to have a life question of the week. I'm going to answer the questions that you submit. So have a powerful day. Listen to Take Back Your Mind. Dynamic blessings. This is our, our moment in our podcast where I answer a life question of the week. This particular question comes from um, Melanie, and she writes, I'm grappling with accepting the death of my beloved husband who lived the most high frequency and healthy life. How is it that someone who had engaged in meditation, exercise, and spiritual development gets stricken with cancer. First of all, Melanie, my condolences for your beloved husband that I can catch a feeling here that you loved and appreciated uh, so much. So in, in, in terms of a question, how can someone that's living a healthy lifestyle get stricken with, with cancer? You know, it's very difficult for us to actually know what's going on in the individual's mind and their subjective tendencies. Um, I've seen individuals who had stage four cancer and were a few months from making their transition to uh, changing it all around and becoming totally cancer free. And I've seen individuals who heard the word cancer and it became a death sentence in their mind and, and they left the body temple. So we don't know um, exactly uh, on an individual basis where an individual was consciously or, or subconsciously where their belief around cancer is. You know, the law says, in substance, you get what you want or, or what you don't want. So sometimes people are holding a, a vibrational frequency of what they don't want to have in their life. I don't want to be broke. I don't want to be unhealthy. I don't want to be sick. You know, and, and, and sometimes what an individual don't want doesn't want, gets a lot of attention, and it becomes uh, what they're attentive to. Now, I'm, I'm not saying your husband was living there. I'm just saying by virtue of how the law works, it's a possibility. But we know one thing for sure. One, his soul knew when it was time to, for him to leave. And, and, and perhaps this particular time was his time to leave and go on f to life after life continuing to express itself. Now here's something for you, as you are grieving your husband, as you are, as you're saying, grappling with his death. You wanna to begin to ask yourself this question. What gift, one, what gift did your husband give to you while he had a body, one? And two, what qualities did he exude while he had a body? Now you mentioned he had a healthy lifestyle and he was involved in spiritual development. So there's some qualities there. 
So what gift and what qualities? And this is what you're to do. Instead of trying to go down the rabbit hole and figure out why did he make his transition, begin to ask a different kind of question. Based on his gift and based on his qualities, you say this to yourself. In order for my life to be a living vibrational memorial to my husband, my friend, my confidant, my compadre, my lover, you know, how can I greatly embody the gift and the qualities that he exuded? Now, as you begin to ask that question, rather than trying to grapple why he left, and of course, this is in due time because there is a period of mourning, there's a period of releasing, you know, but after a number of weeks, you begin to shift up the question to why did he leave to what gift and qualities did he bring while he was here? And then you begin to ask yourself, how can I emulate? How can I embrace those qualities and incorporate them in my thought, my word, and my action? So that every single day, I'm embracing his genius, I'm embracing his gift, I'm embracing his qualities, so I'm actually becoming a vibrational living memorial for him. And then we begin to become aware that he's still alive. Sans body. Doesn't have the same body, no. But he's alive. And then that presence, just like the presence of God, you feel. And the grieving process and the letting go process and the, the, will become easier and you begin to be left with his gift and his God quality that you're now embracing within yourself, not copying him, but catching the frequency of those qualities, you see. So that's what I can offer right now. I hope it assists you and anyone else who has a similar question. If you have a question around life, harmonizing prosperity, relationships, spiritual growth development and unfoldment, you may email us at podcast at michaelbeckwith.com. And of course, we'll only use your first name and we will seek to answer the question. Have a beautiful day. Peace and dynamic blessings to you. As you know, I am Michael B. Beckwith, the founder of the Agape International Spiritual Center, and I thank you for joining my podcast, Take Back Your Mind. What do I mean by Take Back Your Mind, which is, which is the theme of this podcast and will be the theme of all future podcasts as well as I bring on beautiful guests that will be able to articulate their particular uh, way of moving into the world as they have, they are in the process of taking back their mind or have demonstrated success in taking back their mind. What do I mean by that? For those of you who have followed my teachings over the years, you know I have taught over the years that we're not our body, we're not our mind, we're not our uh, emotional body. Those particular bodies are within our field of awareness. We have a body. We have a mind, but we're not our mind. What is the mind? The mind is a set of programs that have the tendency to repeat themselves, providing perception that provides thoughts and thought forms that ultimately provide how we experience the world, you see? And so, um, as my friend Bruce Lipton loves to say from time to time, as he speaks about the Jesuits, he would say that the Jesuits have said over a period of time, show me, give me a boy from the age one to seven, and I'll show you the man. They were aware of the programming of the mind that takes place at a very young age. Now that pro programming takes place within the womb. It takes place not only the first seven years of our existence, but it continues to take place through family dynamics, civil and social culture that impacts the mind, uh, emotional contagion that moves through society, uh, news reel, social media, and the like. All of this has the tendency to program our mind. So ultimately, the mind is programmed 
with emotional contagions and beliefs and perceptions that we may not even have placed them there ourselves. And so we are dedicated to spiritual awakening. We're dedicated uh, to the real self emerging. We're de dedicated uh, to embracing the next great vision version of ourself. But to do that, we must take back our mind, you see. And so how do, how do we, how do we uh, uh, take back the mind? I teach observation leads to transformation. Now, what does that mean? First of all, let's break down transformation. The word transformation has the word trans in it and formation. Trans means to go beyond. So transformation means to go beyond the present formation of our life experience. Things that have formulated themselves and coagulated and condensed themselves into experience that has the tendency to repeat itself. So transformation means that we're going beyond the present formation of our life. And so observation leads to transformation, meaning as we begin to observe the thoughts, the beliefs, the perceptions, the opinions that flow through our awareness in a non-judgmental way, without resisting, without denying, without embracing, just watching, a great discovery begins to take place. One of the greatest discoveries we will ever have. That that which is passing through our awareness is not who we are. That the awareness that we are observing with is who we are. We're not the mind that is programmed with beliefs, opinions, perceptions, points of view, positionalities, interpretation of past experiences that produce more and more experiences. That's not who we are. That's not what we are. We're awareness. So one of the steps in taking back our mind is observation leads to transformation. We learn to observe non-judgmentally the emotional content that arises. We learn to observe the thoughts that are flowing through our awareness, non-judgmentally. And then little by little, sometimes dramatically, we have the discovery that that which is passing through is not you. It's just thought forms and programs, previously held perceptions, other people's beliefs that are now passing through our awareness. And that leads to step number two today, or lesson number two. The first one is observation leads to transformation. The second thing is that we, we must daily unplug. You have to daily unplug from what? You want to daily unplug from the news reel. I have said over the years, you go from the reel to, to the reel, meaning you go from the news reel, R-E-E-L, to the reel, R-E-A-L. The news reel gives way to the, to the real, R-E-A-L. What is the real? The real is the eternal presence. The real is the presence of love and beauty and intelligence and abundance. The real is that which is eternal and forever. So we have to daily unplug from the news real. We have to daily unplug from what other people are thinking and what other people are thinking about us. We have to daily unplug from our own opinions. Let's break this down. You want to daily unplug from the news. The news is pretty much the same every day happening to different people. Basically, when you're watching the news, you're primarily getting the lowest common denominator of the human experience sprinkled with some, some good news or some good things that are happening on the planet. But pretty much, you're getting um, the corporistocracy point of view, you're getting the, um, a point of view that, that leads one to become a consumer, not necessarily a creator. You're, you're getting the lowest common denominator of that which is happening on the planet. So it's not something you want to uh, ingest on a regular basis. You want to daily unplug from that. Tune in a little bit to kind of see the milieu, what's happening on the planet. But you want to daily unplug from that. You want to daily unplug uh, from 
-hmm. what you think other people are thinking and what you think other people are thinking about you. Now, I have taught over the years that if you want to go to hell, think about what other people are thinking about you and you'll find yourself in a hellless condition because you'll become so enamored and so open and, 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 and so available to considering what other people might be thinking about you or might be thinking at all. It's not important what other people are thinking about you. It's not important what other people are even thinking about. What are you to be concerned with? You are to be concerned with that which this vast presence called by millions of names, love intelligence, the great God of the universe, mother, father, God, infinite presence, love, beauty, intelligence. This presence, what does it think about you? But there is a scriptural reference that says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord of hosts, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. That's the way we are thought of by the eternal. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, not of negativity, not of less than, not of comparison, to give you an expected end. That expected end, what is that expected end? The activated potential that lies within us. You, see, you feel that? So, we are uncoupling and unplugging from the news real, R-E-E-L, to come into the real. We're letting go of the importance of what other people may be thinking and may be thinking about us. And thirdly, we want to unplug from our own opinions. We mm, is a Zen statement that says, above all, cherish no opinions. Opinions change. You think about your own evolution over a number of years, that you may have had a certain opinion about something or about someone, and then you evolved or you began to see things from a different perspective, and you realize, hmm, that, that opinion was short-sighted or it didn't carry the full dynamic of the individual or the situation, and your opinion changed. So we don't cherish our opinions. We, we, we all have them. But we have to unplug from our opinions because the opinions create a kind of a, a filter from, from us seeing that which is real, R-E-A-L. So we have to unplug from the news. We have to unplug from other, what other people are thinking about us. And we have to unplug from our opinions. This is on a regular basis. This is why there's a... a, a great emphasis around meditation, a great emphasis around mindfulness. And this helps us to unplug so that we can begin to reprogram our mind, take it back. Because here's the deal. If you are not thinking for yourself, then something is thinking for you. So if you are not thinking for yourself, what's thinking for you? was thinking for you is your opinions, which may or may not be correct, accurate, or in alignment with wholeness. What's thinking for you? The social milieu, the emotional contagion that's moving through society and the culture? What's thinking for you? Your family dynamic? What's thinking for you? Other people's opinions that have coerced you, seduced you into thinking the way they want you to think? So if you're not thinking for yourself, meaning you're not available to the insight, the revelations, uh, the inspiration from the presence, then something else is pulling the strings and you are a puppet on that of, of the dynamic of the world of phenomena. I've always loved this statement by Dr. Howard Washington Thurman that says in substance that we must listen for the voice of the genuine that's within us. The voice of the genuine, the voice of the real, you see. And if we don't listen and, and come into alignment with the voice of the genuine, then for the rest of our life, we are dancing on the strings as a puppet that someone else is holding. 
That's not how awakened people live. No. We take back our mind, you see. And then, how else do we take back our mind? We begin to live an intentional life. An intentional life. You may have heard me say from time to time that people don't just merely live from an, an attention deficit disorder. Many people live from an intention deficit disorder. They don't have an intention. They're not living intentionally. And so they're living throughout the course of their day, not responding from a higher frequency, higher vibration, a higher intelligence that's within them. They are reacting to the world of phenomena. They're reacting to other people. They are reacting to circumstances. They're reacting to situations. They're triggered uh, by things that are going on in the world because they don't have an intention. And so I suggest, in order for us to take back our mind, that we have daily intentions. We can have an overarching intention for our life, but, we, but it is very helpful to develop a habit of having a daily intention before you leave your house. Begin to intend something. Today, I am intending to be an instrument of peace. Today, I am intending to be an instrument of patience and of joy, of kindness and compassion. Take any one of those qualities or all of them. I'm intending to live a prosperous life. I'm intending to live from the overflow. I'm intending to be open to the activation of my intention. I'm intending to move through this day gracefully with ease and grace. E and G. Ease and grace. Now, here's the deal. An intention is like a rudder on a ship. Or an intention is like a sail on a sailboat. If you don't have a rudder, you're just going to go around in circles. If you don't open your sail, it doesn't matter how strong the wind is blowing. You're not going anywhere. If, in fact, you have an, an intention, you're not as caught up in the milieu of society that will blow you all kinds of places and you discover at the end of your day, you haven't grown. You haven't become more of yourself. You've just been buffeted around by the world of circumstance, opinions, other people's point of view, the agendas of other people on your life. You haven't <laughs> in any way, shape, or form moved forward in your life. Moving forward simply means the activation of your potential. So we want to live an intentional life. And then fourthly, what we want to begin to do is actually hold the frequency of I am here to grow. Now, what does that mean? First of all, each and every one of us, our individualized expression of infinitude, individualized expression of the infinite, of the presence that's never an absence. We're individualized expressions of this, you see. And we are here to activate our potential. I want you to hear this. We are here to activate our potential. The graveyards are full of people who died with their dreams within them. They died with their music not being sung or danced to. They died with un activated and undeveloped potential, you see, because they were buffeted around by the world. They never took back their mind. You want to establish within yourself that every single day you are growing into your greater potential, activation of your potential. You can set this up as a, as a kind of an inward dynamic habit, vibrational frequency. Every single day, I want to be a greater v version of myself, captured by a vision of what's possible in my life and captured by a vision of what the smaller self would even deem impossible. So that every single day, I'm developing momentum around growth, development, and unfoldment. Growth, development, and unfoldment. Growth, activation of potential. Development, developing a habit that, co that, that stabilizes the insights that we have. And the unfoldment 
This is what unfoldment means. Unfoldment means that there's already a blueprint, a pattern that exists, and we didn't create it, and it's unfolding. Just as you take a, a, a rose bush and you reverse engineer that dynamic, you see that that rose bush began with a seed. In that seed is a perfect pattern, a perfect energetic idea. And when the condition is met, that perfect pattern then unfolds. You get roots and you get shoots that reflect and reveal the pattern that's hidden within the seed. It unfolds. That rose bush didn't create itself. It reveals a hidden pattern that's loaded and coded within the seed. You are a dynamic spiritual idea, an energetic pattern shot from the eternal, a unique expression of infinite potential. When the condition is met, there is unfoldment. You didn't create yourself. You are discovering, activating, expressing yourself. Greater and greater versions of your inf infinite potential. So what are the ramifications of that? Just as you can see flowers and grass growing through the cement that's placed there by our society, because there was an inner condition that was met, it, it grew towards the light. The cement was there, and you see this all the time, roots breaking through the cement of trees. You, you know, the roots of the trees breaking through the cement. You see grass growing through the cracks of the cement or creating openings where there wasn't an opening, a way when there wasn't a way. When you understand unfoldment, when you understand taking back your mind, yeah, there might be obstacles. There may be hindrances. There may be a, a, a particular um, narrative about your life that other people are, are describing about you. But ultimately, if you say to yourself every single day, I am growing into a greater, greater vision and version of myself, when you begin to understand that you can take back your mind, when you begin to understand that you can you can observe and transform. When you, begin to, when you begin to understand, you can unplug. When you begin to understand that you can establish an intention. When you begin to understand uh, that there's a perfect pattern within you and that you are embracing, that you are growing and unfolding as a way of living, nothing can hinder your destiny. Now, I know people sometimes say, you know, from an immature point of view, well, my karma is determining my destiny. I have felt that in my last lifetime or earlier in my life, I did such, I made so many mistakes or I did some egregious acts. I said some things I shouldn't have said, done some things I shouldn't have done, and therefore I have to reap what I have sown. I, I, I will never be able to live a full life of success and of happiness and joy and health and harmony and wellness and well-being and, and, and all of these beautiful qualities that are promised to us because they are intrinsic within us. No, my karma is going to block all of that. We, I've heard people say this over the years. And we want to alleviate you. We want to you know, extricate those particular thought forms because here's the understanding I want you to have. Karma is the vibrational reaping of what you have sown. Karma is you receiving energy that you have put out. There's no doubt about that. The energy you put out, you get back. You get to keep what you give away. That's, that's a law. You get to keep, you give, away, you give away good stuff, you become generous. You give away love and peace and harmony. You wish for the best for everyone. No, that energy comes back. You, 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 you live under the frequency of hate and separation and gossip and, and uh, putting people down and things of that particular nature. Yeah, you begin to reap what you sow in that dynamic. We don't deny that. But understand this. Karma only can determine starting places. Karma cannot determine your destiny. What is your destiny made of? Your destiny is determined by your character. 
What is your character made of? Your character is ultimately made up of your attitude. So attitude determines character. Character determines destiny. So in this precise moment, this precise instant, as you begin to take back your mind, you see, and understand your mind is a set of programs. And many, much of that programming you didn't do. You didn't program yourself from the womb. That's the, and the things that you heard your parents talking about. And maybe your mother was worried about something or had bad nutritional habits. Or maybe there, there was a loving environment in your particular home. And so you were programmed to have a proclivity towards love and harmony and wholeness, you see. You know, maybe there's some deep programming around the politics that were talked about at the table when you were a kid. And, and maybe there's all kinds of things happening in society. You know, so you're learning to take back your mind and to understand that your mind is a set of programmings. You are stopping to observe. Observation leads to transformation. You're daily unplugging, you're establishing an intention, you're embracing the vibrational frequency of unfoldment and growth on a daily basis, and you're shifting your attitude. Now, most people mm, don't get, I, I don't want to say most, I don't want to say that. Many people don't get what they want because they don't believe it's possible. They, they, don't, they don't believe it's possible. Why? Because they're living in a small container of their limited self, the personality self, the self that was created by the programming, defense mechanisms, coping mechanisms, compulsive behaviors, psychological constructs that one had to develop in order to survive. And so that part of us, that limited self, it wants to be right. It, 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 it wants to elevate itself. Sometimes it wants to deny itself. It doesn't care whether it's self-loathing or self-loving. It's just a star, you see? Now what happens, so what happens is as the attitude shifts and we begin to come into a frequency of gratitude, which will be a running theme at times through this particular podcast, gratitude and appreciation and thanksgiving and forgiveness, when our inner attitude shifts and we begin to be released from the clutches of the limited self and our attitude shifts and rises to a higher frequency, and I'll break that down in a minute, that begins to create a different frequency around our character. What is character? Mm, character is an old English term that means the etch of God on our soul. I, I talk about that to a limited degree in my book, Spiritual Liberation, Fulfilling Your Soul's Potential. Character is the etch of God on your soul. So with an ever-expanding attitude around possibility and gratitude, your character changes, then your character forges a new destiny. And just as that grass grows through the cement, then your unfoldment will grow through the cement of your unbelief, the opinions that you hold, the opinions that people hold about you, the situations and circumstances, the vicissitudes of the world of phenomena. Just as that cement can't hold down the grass, the cement of a world point of view will not be able to hold down the unfoldment of your soul when you have the right attitude, and that becomes the frequency of your character. You can take back your mind. You can take back your mind. So ultimately, you have a choice. Am I going to unconsciously live in the frequency of separation that leads to fear, sometimes leads to unforgiveness, resentment, hate, animosity, might makes right, comparison, immature competition? Or am I going to live in the frequency of unity, alignment with my soul, alignment with the present, that leads to love, that leads to peace, harmonizing, uh, uh, the dynamic of harmonizing good, which is another name for peace, patience, kindness, compassion, generosity, 
what frequency am I going to live in? So you can look out at the cascade of the world and you can see the frequencies. Now, some people would say right or wrong and things that, you know, they'll, they'll get into some kind of moral understanding of what's happening in the world. But if you take away morality, if, I'm not saying just take it away, but if you just look through a different lens, what frequency is this? What frequency is hate? What frequency is separation? What frequency is greed? What frequency is unforgiveness, resentment, gossip? What is that frequency? What is the frequency of unity? What is the frequency of love? What is the frequency of forgiveness? What is the frequency of generosity? What is the frequency of kindness? What is the frequency of peace? So without putting a moral judgment on it, you can just see the frequency. Now the limited self, it doesn't really care what frequency it's involved in because it wants, it's starring in its own show of either I am hated, I'm loved, I'm right. It, it is a whole other dynamic. You want to begin to live in a higher frequency. So if you begin to take back your mind through the ways that I've just articulated, and as I've indicated, I'll be having guests on on a regular basis that will use their own life as a testimony as to how they've embraced taking back their own mind and has led to tremendous success in areas of their own genius, you see. You will be able to do the same. Because what I want you to know is you may uh, be ensconced in your limited self and you believe, oh, all of this good that I see uh, people giving testimony about, that's for them. That does not, that's not for me. I can't, I can't live that way, you see you will be able to be undistracted by distractions of the surface mind. And you will begin to, to begin with belief. Belief will then lead you to a level of practice of those four dynamics that I've mentioned today. And then those four dynamics will lead you just to insight and expanded awareness. Your character will change. And you will successfully, on a regular basis, through intentional living, take back your mind. Don't let it run or be run by <laughs> individuals. Or don't let it be run by thought forms that are out there in the world of effects, circumstances, situations, and points of view. I want you to feel that. As we begin to take back our mind, remember the mind is a set of programs, then the cement of our lives, which might be created by opinions, our own opinions from time to time, remember cherish no opinion, might be created by our being caught up in what other people are thinking, what other people are thinking about us, may have been forged by time blindedness, meaning whatever happened when you were in the womb, uh, family dynamics, uh, society and cultural contagion that was happening, uh, so many things that have been mm, programming our mind. When the vibrational condition within us is met, unfoldment takes place. Doesn't matter how thick the cement is. That which is within us is greater than that which has condensed itself as the world. You are a unique, nominal, spiritual idea. And when you take back your mind, you are establishing yourself as a free being, a sovereign being. Nothing pulling the strings of your life. No, no. And the intrinsic peace and love and harmony and wholeness gets to be set free. Now, as I said earlier, you might be thinking, hmm, so-and-so, one of my guests, might have a very powerful testimony that you'll see. Many of my guests will. And you might be saying to yourself, oh, that's for them. All that good and all that success and all that healing and wholeness, that's not for me. I don't believe it, you see. 
But I want you to know that all of my guests, they're all just beautiful people. They're not special people. They're just individuals who specialize taking back their mind and activated their own potential, activated their own genius. And whatever has happened to anyone can happen to everyone. Hear that. Whatever has happened good to anyone can happen to anyone. I want you to take back your mind. I want you to take back your mind. I want you to take back your mind. And so this particular program, this particular podcast will carry a question of the week, a moment of meditation, and just, and just a deep loving intentionality that you can become a greater version of you. So Take Back Your Mind is sponsored by the Agape International Spiritual Center, agapelive.com. We have three services every Sunday, daily meditation, daily prayers with one of our master teacher practitioners, classes at our Agape University, and tremendous programs and departments and ministries, all for individuals to grow into their greatest potential. It's sponsored by Adapta Zen. Adapta Zen produces the Adapta Zen Super Greens Powder and the Vitamin D3K2, both essential for our immune system and for our daily requirements that the body temple needs for health and vitality and vigor. Those are our sponsors. Thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe to the podcast, Take Back Your Mind, and please alert your friends that we can develop and create a deep sense of coherence around that which is intrinsic within us. Peace and love and harmony and intelligence. Have a bright and a beautiful day. This is our meditation practice for the week. Meditation means, or the way I define it, is paying undistractable attention to that which is real. That's one definition. And meditation is one of the foundational vibrations of our spiritual community. Obviously, there are different modalities of meditation, but that's one of the foundational pieces of our spiritual community. We're going to take a moment and meditate together based upon the teachings that came through today. So I invite you to <clears throat> sit comfortably in your chair. Let's have your back erect without being rigid. You're not going to be rigid and tight, but you do want to be erect. And today, let us put our hands on our laps facing downward as a sign of bringing the eternal into time, bringing the eternal into the world, not trying to be an ascended master, but to be a descended master, to bring the eternal into time. So your hands are on your lap facing down. Close the outer eyes. And begin to notice that your body is breathing. You don't have to do anything to the breath in this particular form of mindfulness. You're just noticing that the body's breathing. And you're noticing that the body is breathing presently. It's not breathing in the future. It's not breathing in the past. That does not exist. It's breathing presently. Let's begin to notice that we are establishing an intention as we are sitting. We are intending to break free from the limited thought forms and beliefs and perceptions that hinder right seeing. So we have an intention to wake up. We're watching the breath. We're sitting with intention. 
Now, you've heard me say today, observation leads to transformation. As you're sitting, just begin to observe thoughts, perceptions, opinions, points of view, emotions, sensations that are arising in your awareness. And begin to notice you can observe these thoughts and opinions without judgment, without interference. You can just begin to just notice them. Allow that process to occur right now. Observation. Leading to transformation. You're not judging good or bad, moral or immoral. You're just noticing whatever is emerging, whatever is floating through your awareness. Whether you would call it dark or light, good or bad, desired or undesired, no judgment, just observing. Be aware that whatever it is that you observe changes on a subatomic quantum level just based on observation. Scientific researchers would call it the observer effect. That whatever it is you observe changes based on your perception, based on your observation. So as you're looking at those thoughts and beliefs and opinions, they're changing based on your observation. And because you are in league with an intention to take back your mind, an intention to wake up to your glorious nature, the observer effect is magnified. It's magnified for freedom. Take another few seconds and just observe without judgment. Embracing an intention to be free. Taking back your mind. And it is from this awareness that I have the privilege and the honor to speak this vibrational word for each and every one of us, that we may be free today. Not merely free from lack, limitation, fear, doubt, worry, but free to be our real essential self. That this word, this vibration, this frequency, serves to be a law of elimination to anything that would hinder, delay, or obstruct the fullness of life moving through us right now. We give thanks for this, and we allow it to be so. And so it is. Now, so be it. It is done. You may slowly open your eyes, and thank you for participating in this meditative moment. Have a bright day. Your time is very valuable, so I want to thank you for lending us your ear and participating in taking back your mind. If you want to submit a question for the question of the week, please submit it to podcast at michaelbeckwith.com. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, please submit a review and let us know your thoughts. Stay on top of current episodes by subscribing to the podcast so that you'll receive alerts and not miss one single episode. And feel free to share 
this podcast with all of your friends and family. And until we meet again, take back your mind, and you will take back your life. Peace and blessings.